Hey everybody, it's Slippery Slope, and I'm back with Python tutorial number seven. Now, I kind of sped through a lot of information in three and a half minutes last time, and believe it or not, there's even more information about strings that you'd probably want to know right now. Let's get going. Let's declare a variable. Let's give it a value. Let's roll. Let's say I wanted to tell someone what their lucky number is. Why? Because I'm a nice guy. So I type up luck as the name of my variable and I decide to let its initial value be 28. Okay, that's cool. Well then after that, we want to print it out on screen, right? So your magic number is, let's add an is there because that looks more proper. Well, what? This, dude, dude, this is, this is totally straightforward. I have a quote here, and then I have a number, and I mean, I kind of ended the quote there, so it would be outside the quote, but still, I mean, that's still cool, right? I could still type it up like that, right? Wrong! Actually, there are a couple different things you could do here. Let's get doing this. We could do it like this. And it'd be awesome if I could just press up and, and have, like, the last thing that I typed up appear instead of go up and down in Python. That would be cool. But instead, we're going to do it like this. We're going to type up what we just did, except we're going to add luckle. Yeah, that's a pretty fun word to say, luckle. It's not a real word, though. And we're going to add these little buggers here. And they're called back quotes. And you might also see them called back ticks. And I said buggers, so I guess back tick makes more sense. Well, you do that, you run it, and boom, your magic number is 28. And you probably want to add a space there at the end in order to make it look more cool, you know, more space and stuff. I, I, I said cool, though. I mean, cool. And there's another way you can do it, too. So that's way number one to get around this terrible, terrible situation in which Python goes, er, this ain't a string. You're using a plus sign. And this is like a number, and this is like a string and not a number. What's the big deal, dog? So let's do the second thing now before I keep bumbling with lingo and slang words and stuff and become impossible to understand. Check this stuff out, like usual. Boom, str, your magic number is now a string. Print your lucky number is, or magic number, your lucky magic number is plus luck. Check that out. Check it out now, funk soul brother. I didn't need to add a back quote, or two back quotes rather. I didn't need to add any back ticks because I used this sucker right here. And that decided, hmm, this 28, well, it's now a string. I turned it into a string because I'm a nice guy like that. Now, another thing you can use is you can use this instead of str. So let's say if luck was like that, you would type it up like that. And then, you know, you would do your print, your mag num is plus luck. You could do it like that. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there is a very subtle difference between str and reaper. Yeah, reaper. Like that show reaper. You ever see that show? It's pretty cool. It only lasts a couple seasons, though. But the thing is, this is for the sake of readability. And this is more like the Spock way of doing it. This is the more for the sake of logic, for the sake of accuracy. And depending on the version you're using, um, you could get different answers if you're using a, an old version uh, for a string or wrapper. But um, we're focused on how stuff looks, so we're going to keep using str. guess that's about it. If you have any questions about strings, feel free to leave a comment. And uh, it was fun making this video. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. Slippery Slip signing out and keeping my current color scheme. Peace.